For some of you, this is the long-awaited follow-up video to the discussion and analysis that I did on the Anchor F1200. This is specifically my experience with using two of the Anchor F1200s in my solar setup and some of the quirks and annoyances that I have discovered since, since I bought the first one, which was coming up on two years ago. Anchor's still selling these. They're still at a really good price for their capacity, but I think it's worth noting these things that I've discovered and perhaps factoring them in. So the first thing is, I'm just gonna do a quick description of my solar setup, which I'm going to get into more details in a later video, but this is just gonna be the, the quick version. So the setup that I have is represented pretty much here. It's four 50 watt panels. I have them all wired in parallel. The amount of current they can provide to the power station adds. The voltage is all the same, stay the same. So each one of these panels has an open circuit voltage of 21.8 volts DC. Equally important is this short circuit current voltage, short circuit current. I don't know why I wrote voltage there. Just a short circuit current which is 3.1 amps. If you have four of these in series, you're going to get 3.1 amps times four, which is 12.4 amps. Add say eight more of these, then I have to go to 10 gauge or eight gauge or six gauge. I gotta go to a really, really heavy gauge wire to minimize the I squared R losses. They become a very important part of this whole equation. This is how I have it set up. I left it this way because I wanted to be able to use it with a variety of power stations that I have. And the two that I'm primarily gonna be talking about are the two largest ones that I have that are over one kilowatt hour of storage a piece is the Anchor F1200, of which I have two of those, and a Ugreen Power Roam, which is just over one kilowatt hour. It's 1,024 watt hours. The reason why I kept it this way is because the Anchor F1200, it has an input voltage of 30 volts DC max. I think it has a little bit of a tolerance to go a little higher than that, but basically you can't go above 30 volts DC. So both of the units I have are limited to a voltage range of 11 to 30 volts DC. Now I just double checked myself, fact checked myself on the Anchor website, and it's now showing that the Anchor Solex F1200 portable power station actually has a voltage input voltage range of 11 to 60 volts DC. This is the one I have, and this is the this is the new new one, which is the thing that kind of frustrates me about <laughs> Anchor is that they seem to keep changing, moving the goalposts, they keep calling the thing the same thing, and then they change the specs on it. So make sure you check the specifications before you buy to make sure that it's suitable for the application that you're looking to use it for. Because I would like to move these into series parallel combination. While the point may no longer be as valid for the F1200 because they've updated it to now have a 60 volt range. There are battery banks that have even a wider range so you can go and you have more flexibility in the configuration. The one that I originally bought was rated only to 30 volts. The one I bought last year also rated only to 30 volts. That is one of the quirks and annoyances that I've had with this is that I have to keep these all in parallel and because their open circuit voltage is 21.8, if I were to try to put any of them in series, the open circuit voltage would be 42 volts. So if I'm on a sunny day and it's not charging yet, that's going to that's the voltage that the power station will see and will make it unhappy and potentially damage it. It probably would clamp to a certain point, but you don't want to be getting into that situation. So in summary, it's possible that the 30 volt solar input or even the 60 volt solar input could be a limitation depending on which way you'd like to configure the solar panels that you have in your setup. That's the first thing. These next things are uh, are actual things that I am pretty sure Anchor has not resolved. I mean, if any of you have have them and you have experienced that these things have been resolved, then please let me know in the comments. And I've noticed that one of the things that has happened on this particular model is that the pass-through charging results in a weird behavior with these. It's with the 11 to 30 volt DC range at minimum. Perhaps when they made the change to 11 to 60 volts, they've resolved this. Anywhere you can buy these things at, and perhaps they've got old stock, new old stock or whatever, and it's not the newer version, then perhaps it's, this is still very valid to be looking at, which is 
these are the specs from the solar panel. I don't think I ever really finished talking about this, but there's an optimum op operating voltage of the solar panel, like so, which is 18.3 volts DC. It's optimum operating current, which is 2.9 amps. If we take my setup and go 18.3 volts times 2.9 amps times four panels, we get 212.28 watts. Now that exceeds the 200 watts that these are rated for. Now that's at, this is at STP, standard temperature and pressure. I mean, it's at, under the most ideal conditions for the solar panel. The highest, again, I've seen is about 175 watts. I'm happy with that. Yeah, it's 85% plus. So the next thing surrounding this is that I have this setup and the input coming in, depending on what video clip I have here, it'll show about 150 watts going into the power station. Now, what is useful to do is to make use of pass-through charging. And what I have found is that the pass-through charging results in the inverter derating the, for whatever reason, usually on the order of up to 30 to 40 watts, especially when it's running in DC mode. But it's the, the DC mode is the one that I've seen that has been most obvious. And it's something that I use more frequently. The other frustration that I've experienced is the pass-through charging results in a power drop at the input. The next thing is relay chattering. So what's happening, happening with relay chattering, chattering, try. So this is our relay. And what we have is we have the the coil and the contact. So the coil's on this side, the contact's on this side. This is the thing that does the switching bit that powers loads. And then this is the, where the signal comes from. So this goes to the microcontroller. And so what the, the F1200 has a relay that it's across the solar input. And it seems like what it is is it activates the inverter or some stage of the inverter, early stages in the inverter, whatever it is, based on this, the voltage input when you plug in the XT60 connector. And what happens is as, the, as you get towards the end of the day and the voltage, I'll draw my awesome graph. So our input voltage, voltage in solar, and we're going across time of day. So that if we're thinking like this is zero, we're doing a world time here, and this is at 24. We're gonna hit, let's just say this is six. This is not graded in any sort of <laughs> oh my, this is not great. 18? Yeah, we got it. So, nah, pretty low here. Sun starts to rise. Okay, our voltage goes up. Maybe it keeps climbing, 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 climbing. We hit some sort of a peak around the midpoint of the day. To, and then around six, let's say it starts to fall back down again. And it's night again. So it looks something like this. Super accurate. This is, you could take this to the bank. It's just the most accurate thing. What happens is, is as these edges here, primarily the edges around dusk, so Anchor says, based on what version of this, the battery you have, it might be, it says like 11 volts to 30, but we're staying within our 30 volts because that's my, that's my solar setup. Something happens here where as it gets close to the end of the day, the voltage present at the panel here gets below this 11 volts. It's somewhere around between like six to nine volts. I've tested it, I've got video on it, so I might put it up here while I'm talking about it. It drops down below this 11 volt threshold and then down below that even further, which is what happens. That's the voltage at the panel, voltage in, into the system. And instead of actually going like, hey, it's end of the day and just turning it off, it gets confused and you'll hear chattering, which means clicking very fast on, on and off. the coil driving the contact, pulling in the contact at a very high frequency. And by high frequency, I mean for a relay, it's based on what I can audibly hear, probably between five and 10 Hertz, which is a lot. If you think about that over the course of a minute, that's 600 cycles. And if you left it for an hour, 36,000 cycles. Now most relays are, are rated to a mechanical cycle length of a million cycles or something like that. But that's a lot of wear on this relay. Again, it's covered under a five-year warranty. What I have found is that they did do something between the very first one I bought and then a year later when I bought the second one, there seems to have been an improvement where it does this less, but it still does it. It seems like it's a bug.
but this is the reality. It, it, the relays will chatter and you have to unplug it. The Power Roam 1200 by Ugreen does not do this. It has no issue with relay chattering or anything like that. Now, I do not believe that it actually even uses a relay to isolate it when it's being powered on. And this has some benefits so that the fact that Anchor is using this is a good thing, in my opinion. Perhaps it has been resolved right now, but it, it is something that I would take a look at, again, if you have any F1200s to see if they're doing this, if you have them plugged in all the time. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is auto restart charging. We're gonna use the same graph, which is the time of day. What happens with the F1200 is that it doesn't resume charging the next day. If you plug it in during the day, day zero, and then you run through that entire day, you get to midnight and you go into the next day and then your, the sun comes out and it's all shiny and bright and full voltage on your panels, no current's gonna flow. It won't restart charging the next day. Now, if it gets cloudy during the day and the, the input power drops to zero, it just can't generate any power based on the available lights. It will just sit because it seems as though it's got, even though it's, there's no current being pulled, the, the MPPT charge controller can see that there is a voltage on the panels and therefore it will keep everything active then resume charging when voltage on the panels gets to a point that it actually can find a point in the IV curve to actually get its maximum power point tracking above, I don't know, a watt or two watts or something like that. So what's disappointing is that when it gets down to night, it shuts off that relay when the voltage drops to below that threshold, and then it doesn't turn it back on again. Now, I can see why they would do this. You minimize a quiescent drain, which is nice, but I mean, you could check it, the, the input voltage like every, I don't know, five minutes or something so that the next day it could just automatically restart. My guess is that on the bigger battery packs that they sell, like for the whole home things and applications like that, they definitely have to have that. It's not, you're not gonna be walking up to it trying to restart it every day. But for these, it's something that it's a little bit surprising that they haven't included. And what's even weirder is that it can have the voltage applied to it. And I've tested it where I've been able to manipulate it to just restart charging without actually having to unplug it and plug it back in again based on interrupting the interrupting the solar panels themselves, not the actual battery, like unplugging and plugging back in the battery. You can do that and it will definitely restart charging. You can even press the display button on it and it will restart charging. It's a weird behavior and I wish it didn't do that. The Power Roam does not. It will automatically restart every day, which is a nice feature. These things largely may have been already addressed if they have been. It's just a matter of checking it before you buy. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.